I am constantly in the market looking for undervalued stocks. After all, the name of the game is to buy low and sell high while remaining patient. And in today's video, we are going to discuss four stocks that appear cheap to me right now. All of them undervalued from a fundamental perspective. And before we dive into these four stocks, do me a huge favor. Click that like button down below. Show your appreciation and it really helps with the algorithm. And also consider subscribing to the channel so you'll be notified anytime we drop new content. And let's jump into it. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here back for another video. As always, I'm a CPA and not a financial advisor, so please do not take this as financial advice. And if you're looking for more stock picks, consider checking out The Motley Fool. Right now, when you go to thefool.com forward slash Mark, you could sign up to receive their 10 best stocks to buy right now, completely free, and they have a ton of other great offerings. All right, let's jump back into today's video, taking a look at four stocks that appear to be rather undervalued. And all four of these stocks are actually in correction territory. And for those of you that don't understand what that means, that means they have had pullbacks of at least 10% or more from their recent highs. And let's begin with our first undervalued stock, which is Visa, stock ticker V. Many of you know Visa as the largest payment processing company, credit card company in the US, but not just in the US, they are global. The company currently has a market cap of $514 billion. Over the past month, shares are down 2%. Over the past year, they are up 7%. But looking at where they've fallen off their highs, shares are in correction territory, albeit slightly, down 11%. I've often said that Visa is one of the highest quality stocks on the market. They give you growth potential, strong free cash flows, which turns into strong dividend growth as well. The company has a unique position and they have some fantastic data that they get to utilize to their benefit on consumers. They get to see spending habits, delinquency rates, and so much more. Here's a look at the company's latest earnings where you could see the company grew its revenue by 10% with earnings growing 20%. And as an investor, when it comes to Visa, transaction volume is gonna be key. As you can see here, payments volume increased 7%, cross-border volume increased 14%, and process transactions grew 10%. All things we like to see moving in the right direction. However, there are some concerns as it pertains to Visa, and more importantly, the global economy. We have seen here in the US, the economy start to slow. We have seen some cracks in the job market. Slower economic growth and job loss usually equates to less spending. Less spending equates to lower transaction volumes. Lower transaction volumes adversely affects a company like Visa. Here are two graphs that I found within the Visa earnings presentation showing that volume growth peaked back in May and has been falling since, which can explain the drop in the stock as well. However, as it pertains to my philosophy, I love investing in high quality companies at low valuations, even if it's short-term headwinds are in front of us because there's nothing fundamentally wrong with the business. It's just an economic cycle that we're going through. Visa is a company that has shown their ability to continue to grow their revenues year in and year out, and they operate the business quite efficiently, which generates tons in free cash flow. They have a free cash flow margin in excess of 50%. In terms of fundamentals, Visa is trading at a forward PE multiple of 23.4 times using next year's earnings estimates. That is well below the company's five-year average of 31.8 times. Now, at first glance, that looks like a massive discount, but we do have to admit growth rates are slowing. So does the company still warrant that 32 times multiple is the question. In my personal opinion, again, not financial advice, I believe 32 times is too high. Something closer to 27 times is more likely, which still makes this stock look quite cheap. At a 27 times multiple, that would imply a price target closer to $300 per share. And where analysts stand right now, that's not too far off. When looking at other analysts, they have an average 12 month price target of 314, implying 21% upside from current levels. In addition to all this, Visa has been a strong dividend grower as well. Although the yield is less than 1%, their five year dividend growth rate is over 15%, which is quite strong. And that leads us to undervalued stock number two, which is Lululemon, stock ticker LULU. -L -U. 
and Lululemon hit the ground running pretty much in the early 2000s. The company is headquartered over in Canada. They currently have a market cap of $30 billion, but the shares have not been performing all that well. Over the past month, shares are down 16%. Over the past year, they're down nearly 40%. And looking at how far they have fallen off their recent highs, shares of Lululemon are down 53%. I tend to be a lot more careful as it pertains to investing in retail companies, whether it's retail apparel or whether it's retail, think of fast food or any food company, because trends are always changing, especially in today's generation. And the other thing as it pertains to Lululemon or Lululemon, as some people want to say, is the fact that they have come across intense competition, not just with the likes of Nike and Under Armour, but even private companies like Viore. So what has been going on at Lulu to cause the stock to decline? Well, competition is one, but here's a look at the company's latest earnings where you could see the company grew its revenue by 10% with earnings growing 11% and comparable same store sales at 7%. All things that are growing, but those growth rates are well below their historical averages. And as you can see here, women's revenue grew 10%, men's revenue grew 15%, whereas women's is a larger share of overall company revenues. Digital online sales increased 8%, and the company continues its strong international expansion plan with international revenues increasing 35%, but America's only grew 3%, which is where some of those concerns are right now, in addition to slowing growth trends. Right now, the Americas account for nearly three quarters of total company revenues. So although the expansion plans are ambitious and the growth is there, it's still a very small piece of the pie. When it comes to Lululemon, it's really going to be all about the economy. Now, they have a higher income clientele, so those earners are going to be able to stay a lot longer, but you're going to see them start to trade down if, in fact, we fall into a bit of a recession. In terms of fundamentals, this is where Lulu looks quite intriguing. Shares currently trade at a forward PE multiple of just 15.3 times. That is well below the company's five-year historical average of 42 times. A 15 times multiple is easily below the S&P 500 market multiple, which makes Lulu that much more intriguing. Usually stocks with multiples below the greater market are slower growing companies. Lululemon is still a company that is growing its earnings at a double digit rate and they can expand and get that moving even faster as their expansion plans continue to come online. When looking at other analysts, they have an average 12 month price target of $375 per share, implying an impressive 55 upside from current levels. That is very bullish. And although I'm bullish on the stock, I'm not sure if I'm that bullish over the next 12 months. And that leads us to undervalued stock number three, which is Amazon, stock ticker AMZN. And I know I've covered Amazon on a few recent videos, but at current levels, I still don't want you to miss this fantastic opportunity in this big time growth driver. The company currently sports a market cap of $1.8 trillion. Over the past month, shares are down 13%. However, over the past year, they are up 20%. Since earnings though, and since reaching their highs just a month ago, shares are down 15%, so in correction territory themselves. When it comes to Amazon, they have a ton of growth drivers. I love companies that have a diversified revenue stream. They could go and pull from cloud with AWS. They can go over to advertising. Obviously, they have retail, subscriptions, and so much more. From a valuation perspective, Amazon looks quite cheap, especially for the growth that's coming. And although when it comes to growth stocks, I don't like to look at PE ratios, we're still going to look at it just to remain consistent, but I'm going to show you a few others as well. Analysts are calling for the company to generate 2025 EPS of $5.88 per share, which equates to a forward PE of just 28.9 times for a stock that has a three-year average EPS growth rate of 35%. That equates to a peg ratio below one at 0.82, which again, anything below one is very intriguing. But that's not all. On an EV to EBITDA perspective, shares are trading at just 17 and a half times. To put this into perspective, this is the cheapest that you could buy this stock based on the multiple over the course of the past decade plus. That includes the 2022 stock market crash that we saw. 
That is incredible value for Amazon, and analysts actually agree, as they currently rate the stock a strong buy, with an average 12-month price target of $225 per share, implying an impressive 28% upside from current levels. And that leads us to the fourth stock on our list. Undervalued stock number four, the Walt Disney Company, stock ticker DIS. And through the first three companies that we looked at, you could all see the growth potential that they've both had and can reignite. However, when it comes to Disney, there hasn't been really any growth at all. It's been a stock that has been reeling. So when we're looking at Disney, we're going to look at it with a very different lens. We are looking purely from a value play. And when we're talking about the House of Mouse, there is a turnaround story that has to take place here and will take place, but you cannot discount the amazing assets that this company has. Disney currently trades at a market cap of $156 billion. And over the past month, shares are down 12%. Over the past year, down 4%. And looking from where they're at, from their 52-week highs, shares have pulled back 31%. In fact, if you look out even further, Disney shareholders over a five-year period have lost more than 30% of their investment. And when you compare that to what the S&P 500 has done over that time span, which has doubled, that is <clears throat> rough to take. So what's going on with Disney? Well, they've been going through executive changes. CEO Bob Iger is back at the helm. How long will he be there? That'll be a question mark. They've also gone through proxy fights, takeover attempts, and a weakening economy. So let's take a closer look at valuation to see, does this company make sense? Analysts currently have 2025 EPS estimate at $5.26 per share, which would equate to 7% year-over-year growth. Analysts are looking for 13% growth the following year. That gives us a forward PE multiple on next year's earnings of 16.3 times. That is below a market multiple. The company's 10-year average, for comparable purposes, is 25 times. We want to go even further out. Their 20-year average is 21.4 times. So today's value is well below both of those figures, and growth is expected to pick back up after getting derailed by the pandemic. However, that pandemic did help in other facets. They launched Disney Plus right after the pandemic took place. And had they not launched it at that exact point in time, I don't think they would be where they're at today. As you had millions across the globe that were pretty much locked in front of their televisions. And speaking of Disney Plus, in the most recent quarter, Disney Plus just became profitable for the business, which is well in advance of the company's original goals. Disney Plus subscribers have surpassed 150 million, but they did top out at 164 million back at the end of 2022. Taking a look at valuation again, in terms of EV to EBITDA, shares trade at just 14.8 times. That is the lowest we have seen for Disney shares since 2018. In terms of free cash flow, shares currently trade at a 10.2 times multiple, the lowest in over a decade and more than half of what the company's five-year average is. So when it comes to Disney, there's obviously risks and there's economic risks. However, it's gonna take patience, but the value that you're getting right now looks very intriguing to me. And the assets that this company owns and the capital expenditures, the billions of dollars in CapEx they continue to pour in to not only their parks, but adding more cruise ships cannot be denied. Analysts have a 12-month price target in the stock of $117 per share, implying 32% upside and rating the stock a strong buy. So there we just looked at four stocks that all appear quite cheap, four stocks that are all in a correction of their own, meaning they have pulled back 10% or more, some of them much more than 10% off of their recent highs. Down in the comment section below, let me know which of these four stocks do you rate a buy. And if you haven't done so yet, please hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.